All right, let's take a look at how we can find the average rate of change for a function when given the function's equation. So we have our function here, f at x equals 7x squared minus 4x plus 5, and we're asked to find the average rate of change of that function on the interval negative 2 to 3. So how do we do that? Well, remember that average rate of change refers to the slope of a secant line. In our problem, that secant line is the line that goes from the point on our graph that has an x value of negative 2 to the point on the graph with an x value of 3. So if we were to do a rough sketch here, well, our function is a parabola, and we have some point on there that has an x value of negative 2 and some other point that has an x value of 3, we're trying to find the slope of the line that joins those two points or that passes through those two points, and that's called the secant line. So how do we do that? Well, we'll say average rate of change equals, and once again, this is a slope. Average rate of change is a slope, and slope is rise divided by run. So we need to find our rise and divide it by our run. Now our rise in this case refers to the difference in our y values or the difference in our f at x values, and the run is the difference or the change in our x values. Now the change in our x values we can calculate using the x values that we were given. We have our second x value of 3, we'll subtract our first x value of negative 2. Now for the change in the y values, or the f at x values, we need to find those values. And how do we do that? Well that's where the equation comes in. We need to find the value of f at 3, that's like the y value corresponding to an x value of 3, and subtract the y value that goes with an x value of negative 2, and that is going to be f at negative 2. So we can actually just write f at 3, it's the y value that goes with 3, subtract the y value that goes with negative 2. And we can calculate these values. So for f at 3, I'm just going to sub 3 into that equation, and that will give me that y value. So we get 7 times 3 squared uh, minus 4 times 3 plus 5, which is 56. That's what I get if I sub 3 into our function. And if I sub negative 2, I get 7 times negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 plus 5. And that gives us 41. In the denominator, we have 3 minus negative 2, and that's 5. So 56 minus 41 gives us a nice value of 15. And when we divide that by 5, we get a value of 3. And that is our average rate of change on the interval negative 2 to 3. And since there are no units given in this problem, we can leave this rate of change without units. There you go.